Dolby Atmos expands on the concept of the surround sound field and creates a 3D space by adding a vertical dimension as well as the possibility to adjust a sound signal size and distance. Dolby Atmos resolves the challenge of delivering multiple mixes using a single master file that can be played back on any Dolby Atmos compatible system, from simple stereo headphones to the complex array of speakers found in large movie theatres. Mixing in Dolby Atmos requires additional computer resources and you'll have to adjust the I.O. buffer size to relieve some of the pressure on the CPU in order to avoid experiencing latency created by the larger buffers and overload in the CPU the recommended workflow is to separate your production into two stages first complete all live software instrument performances and audio recordings and start a rough stereo mix second convert the logic project to Dolby Atmos to continue the mix and position the tracks in the surround field before you can start mixing in Dolby Atmos you must take a few steps to ensure your mix does not distort and you can monitor the panning as expected on your stereo monitors. My stereo track here and we're going to begin by adjusting the preferences. So we're going to go to Logic, Preferences, Audio Preferences and we're going to go to uh, I.O. Buffer here and we're going to increase that to 512. We might do that anyway on uh, when we're mixing. Bear in mind when mixing in Dolby Atmos projects with a sample rate of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz need a buffer size of around 512 samples. Projects with sample write rates of 88.2 or 96 will need uh, 1024. So currently Dolby Atmos supports 48 and 96 kilohertz sample rates. When a logic project is set to another sample rate, the audio is automatically converted to 48 or 96 on the fly, which requires more computing power. So we're going to close the preference window and press X to bring up the mixer window. And currently all of the channel strips have their outputs set to stereo out across here and they have a regular pan knob and now we're going to go to mix well you can't see that but drop down mix menu and there's Dolby Atmos and we're going to click on Dolby Atmos and you'll get asked to confirm which, sorry once you turn it on here Dolby Atmos and you'll get asked to confirm uh, Spatial audio, which you've done, and you'll see then that the uh, surround panners are applied. It's gone from a stereo mix to a surround mix. So, in the mixer, all the channel strip outputs are set to surround, and the pan knobs are replaced with surround panners. So, on the master channel over here you'll see that the Dolby Atmos plugin is inserted and usually that would be inserted in the first slot. Let's close that and be inserted into that slot there. I'm going to take this first drum loop, solo S, double click the panner to, to bring up the surround panner. I'm going to press play and I'm going to move the sound to the back. So unless you're monitoring through a surround speaker system, you'll no longer hear the audio in the speakers. And the reason is because on the Atmos master plugin, if we click and open it, the monitoring format is 7.1.4. So seven speakers in a sort of a flying saucer surround sound type configuration. Uh, point one is the subwoofer and the four is the speakers in the ceiling so two front stereo two back stereo so if I now change the monitoring format to let's say Apple uh, renderer sound returns so as of these are our binaural uh, formats 
So we have Dolby Renderer and Apple Renderer. So uh, at the time of this video, we have the Apple Renderer, which uh, will enable head tracking for supported devices such as AirPods. And we've also got Apple, uh, sorry, uh, Renderer for built-in speakers for newer Macs with Dolby Atmos speakers. If you're on one of these surround uh, monitoring formats and you're not using a multiple speaker array, you've just got stereo speakers and you pan your sound to the back and you still hear a sound, then your input output assignment needs to be reconfigured. So if you go to logic, preferences and audio and here you'll see IO assignment we click that and you'll need to reconfigure this according to your speaker uh, setup so for example if I change this left surround to one so this is the left surround and I change it to one then I start to hear a sound as it's now coming out of the this one here So once you've set up your surround format, we'll just go to Apple Renderer and stop. You may notice some distortion. Now if I play that, you may notice some dif distortion coming through. So um, you might need to handle the levels uh, a little bit. So handling the loudness in uh, Dolby Atmos is done this way. So when mixing in Dolby, the loudness level of the mix should stay at or below minus 18 dB uh, LUFS LUFS at all times. Yeah, so in order to achieve that goal, we'll create a mastering chain of plugins that lets you adjust the gain of the audio signals and meter its levels in specific positions on the master channel strip. So on the master channel strip, position the mouse pointer so that you see a line above the Dolby Atmos plugin. And we're gonna go to, I'm gonna change that gain plugin. I'm gonna change it to a multi-channel gain. So we're gonna click here. We go to utility, multi-channel gain. And we're gonna have that and then next we're going to have some limiting so we're going to click there and we're going to go to um, dynamics to think then and we're going to choose a 7.1.2 limiter and then below that we're going to go to we're going to put a level meter here so we're going to go to metering and level meter and below the Atmos plugin. So all of those are before, but below the Atmos plugin, we're going to go to uh, metering again. And this time we're going to choose a 7.1.4 loudness meter. So you won't need the Dolby Atmos plugin for this exercise. So let's make some room on your screen. So close the Dolby Atmos plug in if it's still open and let's rearrange the remaining plugins so we can see them let's close that as well maybe make them a bit smaller so let's just start the playback at a point where it's at its loudest the solo now what I want to do is I want to position on the level meter here I want to position this line that sort of defaults at uh, minus 12 down to 
minus 18 you'll see it says minus 18 on the other side over there and um, see at the moment the left and right are quite hot because most of the signals are being sent left and right but I can turn everything down globally here and of course I can turn down individual channels when I need to so this um, level meter shows sort of momentary loudness and reacts quickly to gain changes um, so all I'm going to do at this stage is just bring that down to minus 18 and the same here as well on my loss meter that's already out oh, there it should be there and the limiter isn't doing anything at the moment but i'll just put it in there for the time being so that's how i can sort of create headroom as you can see got headroom going on before i start panning sounds around so panning tracks in the surround field. So to build the Atmos mix, you can combine two types of tracks, uh, bed tracks and object tracks. The tracks that make up the foundation of the mix are called bed tracks. You use object tracks for elements of the mix you want to feature such as lead vo vocals, uh, lead instruments or specific special effects, especially when you want to precisely locate a sound source or move it around the surround field using automation so panning bed tracks so bed tracks are panned using the surround panner this one so if you've worked in surround sound before you'll recognize this surround panner and let's just take the drum as an example and solo it pan it forward have a listen. And what we can do here as well is we can um, adjust the position as such. Uh, we can also Uh, change the elevation so this is on the this is on the plane this this is height so give us height so as you can see there we're changing the elevation there's the uh, a level to adjust the center signal and there's a level there to send signal to the LFE, the low frequency effect, the subwoofer. So we can adjust that accordingly. Uh, the other type of panner is the uh, object panner. So let's go to, let's say, uh, we'll go to the lead guitar solo. So there's the solo, and there's the effects. So we're going to go into the output window and we're going to choose 3D object panner. Double click and you'll see you've got two pucks left and right rep representing the left and right field of the signal. and we can drag those front or back or make them wide narrow we can change the angle left to right and we can also here change the height so let's go extreme let's go the back And we can adjust the size here. 
So if we open up the master channel strip now and click the uh, Atmos plugin, inside the 3D box, you can see two blue spheres representing the position of the left and right signals of the solo effects. If I now just uh, drag that down, you'll see those sounds move down. Now over in the column to the right, you can choose different binaural renderer modes for each bed and object track. There's the bed tracks, there's the object tracks, and my solo guitar wah is an object track. So if we click in the binaural renderer, we can choose, uh, should be able to choose, uh, it should be in Dolby renderer, sorry, it needs to be in Dolby renderer, not Apple renderer. And we can choose off, near, mid and far, so we can go to far. Just, I'm gonna toggle between near and far. and you should be able to hear the effect that that's having on the sound. Logic Pro comes with a suite of audio effects plugins that are compatible with the Dolby Atmos format. So you've probably used some of these before. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put on a tremolo effect on the solo guitar. So I'm gonna go here just below the SSL plugin and I'm going to choose tremolo from modulation and I'm going to go stereo to 7.1.2 and now I've got my 7.1.2 tremolo effect so change it to two bars shall we And you can see the circulation. So we go circular, left to right, front to rear, random. Here we go left to right. Uh, we also have surround uh, reverbs, so we can add perhaps some reverb to this acoustic guitar. And I think what we do is we just add a space designer, so reverb, space designer, a stereo 7.1.2 again. And I'll just go with the preset for the time being. So we have these balance controls. So bottom, top, front, rear, center, and LFE.
So um, there's two of the Dolby Atmos uh, plugins. There's more. Uh, I think there's about six in all. And you literally have to, sorry, I'm on the wrong channel. I should be on a, yeah, that's correct. You literally just have to go through them and find them. Like so, chorus, flanging, microphase, modulation delay, and so on. So they're not all Atmos compatible. So um, where the fun really starts is when you start to add motion to sounds, so you can hear them move around in the sound field, surround sound field. And to do that, we can we can use uh, automation. So if we wanted to say automate. say we wanted to move that guitar to the back so there's there's the guitar left and right put it there and let's say we wanted to automate it so it moved to the back uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our automation but we're going to use uh, latch which is online so I think most most of you would probably use offline automation read for example where you just draw it in but we're going to latch so we'll get we're going to draw it in on the actual plugin itself so all I'm going to do is I'm going to play I'm going to move that back stop so now when I go back to read so that's not something that I would do in the mix that's just to demonstrate how automation can be used on a uh, Atmos mix these uh, these these are new parameters if you like with Atmos uh, where you've got sort of heights as well so if I was to say adjust the height of this solo so it gets higher again I'd go to latch So that's just some sort of basic tips and tricks. Um, what I do like to do is I like to sort of build up the mix from, from the top. So if I just go through this quickly, there's a drum loop. Uh, I'm getting more into the habit of actually putting everything through uh, the bed, sorry, object tracks rather than bed tracks. literally just move it until it sounded better or different
that's starting to peak. <laughs> Forget, don't forget buses as well. So the great thing about it is there's no right or wrong way at the moment, so everybody sort of experiment with it. So do please experiment and have fun. <laughs> 